Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. The Jamaica Medical Doctors Association, JMDA, has confirmed claims by opposition spokesman on health, Dr. Dayton Campbell, that malfunctioning equipment at the Kingston Public Hospital are seriously hampering the delivery of health care. JMDA President Dr. Elon Thompson is urging the government to immediately address the situation. TVJ's Shamela Pullen reports. Some of the malfunctioning equipment at the Kingston Public Hospital include radiological machines. President of the Jamaica Medical Doctors Association, GMDA, Dr. Elon Thompson, who also works at KP, says this has resulted in patients having to pay for the services at other medical facilities. But he explains that some persons cannot afford it and therefore are not being treated for some illnesses. There are key pieces of radiological equipment that we to be looked at and they don't work and they, they need to be replaced. I mean, we won't go into listing them. We try as best as possible. The, the, the private partnership of it then comes into play so we can try and outsource um, some of the investigation. So whatever cannot be done in the, in the public system, we have to outsource it in the private system. The JMDA president says the Kingston Public Hospital appears to always be in crisis mode. He wants the government to address the issues urgently. There are key pieces of equipment now that don't work. And we have to look at how we're going to get them, whether functional or buy new equipment, and how they're going to be maintained for a, a long while. Um, we also have to look at projection. What what is the requirement of the hospital um, on a yearly basis? I, I think the budget for, for the allocation of the budget towards is still meager. Despite the challenges, Dr. Thompson says doctors and nurses continue to do what they can. We can't continue to say that we're serious about health care and we don't demonstrate it. A lot, of, a lot of times it's just a lot of talk and we have to really, really be serious in our actions as to how we're going to to move the institution forward. There, there is no doubt that the Kingston Public Hospital is one of the premier institutions in the Caribbean, I would say. Difficulty I, I, I have is that persons, um, some persons don't seem to understand that we can do so much more than we are doing if given the resources. Earlier this week, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said he's aware of the challenges and some of them will be addressed in the 10-year strategic plan set out by his ministry. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. More concerns about a possible decline in tourist arrivals during this winter tourist season because of allegations of tourists being raped at popular resorts in Jamaica. The reports have been highlighted in international media and have also resulted in at least one major lawsuit. While conceding that it's a serious issue, a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force says some reports are being exaggerated. Details in this report. The safety of tourists in Jamaica has been in question since recent publications of several rape cases involving tourists at local resorts. U.S.-based newspaper The Free Press reported that over 70 American tourists were raped at some of the country's top resorts between 2011 and 2017. But speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica program on Thursday, Assistant Superintendent Omar Morris noted that while it is a serious issue, the figure is small compared to tourist arrivals during the six-year period. If we compare our figures for 2017, we had 4.3 million visitors arriving in the island last year, 2017. However, we recorded a total of 81 crimes against foreign nationals, including tourists. So when you calculate the ratio and the percentages, that is actually 0.0002%, which is extremely low. While he points out that Jamaica isn't the only tourist destination with reports of guests being raped, ASP Morris assured that his team is making every effort to keep tourists safe. In cases that we have reports and reports coming to us, we have a high clear up rate of bringing persons to justice. So I wouldn't be concerned as it pertains to these reports, but I must say that every single incident that involves any citizen, any person can be 
so significant and impactful to that individual, to the family, to the community, and to the nation at large. So I don't want to discount any individual incident. However, statistically speaking, it is minuscule. He also stressed that Jamaican residents are not the only accused in the over 70 rape cases involving American tourists. We recognize that incidents do involve tourists and tourists. Mm. It does involve locals and our visitors as well. Mm. So it, we deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. So but for it, the most part, where, where does it happen? I would want to say that it is, based upon this year's statistics and last year's statistics, it is actually 50-50 or thereabout. 50-50 tourists and tourists, local and tourists. Yes. Prince Moore, TVJ News. The St. James Municipal Corporation is advising the public to look out for fraudulent checks drawn on its account. Director of Finance Tamara Cunningham said the checks were not drawn or issued by the corporation and they do not have certain security features. She is asking persons who get checks drawn on the account of the St. James Municipal Corporation to make contact with the corporation before completing any transaction. Persons may also call the police. The St. Anne's Bay Police are investigating the fatal shooting of a man in Mami Bay yesterday. He has been identified as 34-year-old Kevin Machado of Mango Walk, St. James and Pinewood Court in Florida. The St. Anne's Bay Police say about uh, 1 o'clock, Mr. Machado drove to a service station suffering from a gunshot wound to his right leg. He reportedly fell out the car with a firearm in his hand and was later pronounced dead at hospital. The police are trying to determine if he was murdered or died from a self-inflicted wound. The Public Safety and Enforcement Branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force says it has increased its presence to better protect shoppers and motorists during the Christmas period. Head of PSTEB, Senior Superintendent Calvin Allen, says more police personnel will be deployed to town centers. And we are already occupying the main corridors, we are in the town centers. Uh, even some of the youngsters that are close to graduating from, from the academy is part of the numbers that we have out there, all geared towards ensuring the safety and security of, of, our, cit of our citizenry. In addition to sticking to the rules of the road, SSP Allen is calling on shoppers to be careful. We don't want for you after you leave, leave the bank is when you come outside that you are counting that cash. We don't want for you when you leave the ATM, that is the time you're counting your money. You're making yourself vulnerable. And we really don't want for you either to engage any of those cash centers or cash machines that, that is in lonely areas. And if it is in the night, you should even be more careful. So we want for persons, whilst we are doing our part in terms of presence and action, we want you to play your part towards your own safety. The local government minister Desmond McKenzie is making an appeal to corporate entities to get on board and assist in lifting the standards of infirmaries. The local government minister was speaking at a Christmas dinner at the Maypen Infirmary in Clarendon recently. There are some things that corporate Jamaica spend a whole heap of money in supporting. Some of it don't make sense. This is the kind of investment that corporate Jamaica must make in our institutions such as our infirmary where many of the poor and destitute and many who have helped that corporate company to be where they are today. Meanwhile, Mr. McKenzie says come next year, each infirmary will have at least one physiotherapist on staff. This is to help the many residents who are bedridden or can barely move around on their own. About a week ago, I got a letter from the Physiotherapist Association. I don't know if that is the name. They sent me a letter saying that they have a vested interest in the announcement that I made. And they want to meet with me and the staff of the ministry to work out how they can assist. 
The new Forest Infant Primary and High School now has a new building for its Early Childhood Department. The principal says the new building, sponsored by the Chase Fund, will help alleviate the space issues at the school and meet the Education Minister's requirements for certification. At a cost of 43 million Jamaican dollars, the new building contains classrooms, bathrooms, a kitchen, sick bay, principal's office and a play area as well. The Education Minister, Member of Parliament for Manchester Southern Michael Stewart and CEO of the Chase Fund William Billy Heaven officially opened the new building recently. In news overseas, tens of thousands of passengers at one of the UK's busiest airports are experiencing flight disruptions after drones were seen over the airfield Wednesday night. The Gatwick Airport's runway remains closed after two of the devices were seen nearby. Flights are unable to take off or land at the airport. 110,000 passengers on 76 760 flights were due to use the airport on Thursday. Police were still hunting for the drone operator after another device was reportedly found about before 7 o'clock GMT. Police officials suggest that the devices are terrorism related. Gatwick Chief Operating Officer said police did not want to shoot the device down because of the risk from stray bullets. To news now in sports, John Chin fought hard to upset third seed Dwayne Miller in straight sets and progressed to the quarterfinal of the Men's Singles Open at the Jamaican National Open Tennis Championship at the Ligony Club on Wednesday night. Chin, who is the top-ranked junior player, came out 6-3, 6-3 winner. It was really good. Like, I felt like I played. This is my best match of the tournament so far. So, I played well. I went in there with uh, nothing to lose. So, I just played my game. Another top junior, Blaze Bicknell, also made progress as he easily brushed aside Alex Golson 6-1, 6-0. Jacob Bicknell, though, had to come from a set down to beat Marcus Malcolm in three sets. Bicknell lost the first set 4-6 before taking the second set 6-4. The third and deciding set went the distance with Bicknell taking it 10-7. Another top seed in the men's single, Damian Johnson, had a relatively easy night as he got to Javon Hewitt 6 1 6 2. And that's the midday news. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Do remember to join us at 7 for the primetime news package. On behalf of the news, sports, and production teams, good afternoon.